I'm afraid we might lose Frederick Obermeyer, who's in a studio in Munich, Germany. So, before we do, as a leader of this whole effort, analyzing over the last year this massive um, uh, number of files, information um, from this Panamanian law firm, um, talk about where you're going with this from now. I mean, there are so many stories, what you're following. And, of course, the book Panama Papers was just released in Germany today, Frederick. Um, for us, the last two days were just the beginning. I mean, there will be, for example, at Süta Zeitung, we are going to publish or are planning publications nearly every day now for the next two and three weeks, and then we will go on in a, a regular basis. And there are still great uh, stories and revelations to come out in the next days. So I would, I would recommend stay tuned with ICIJ. And what have you been most surprised by, Frederick, in all of your work with this? What do you think are the stories that could topple governments? Uh I think, for me, it was very important to realize that it's not only governments of autocratic regime kleptocrats being in the data, but that, at the same time, it's Western or leaders of Western governments being in the data, like the Icelandic prime minister. And furthermore, for me, it's like we are always, at least in Germany, we speak about tax havens in the context of taxes and tax minimization and tax evasion. But for me, uh, the Panama Papers, they do show that it's not only about taxes. It's about criminals hiding their wrongdoings. It's about sanctioned people uh, trying to go on with the business, although they are sanctions. And it's, I think, this is the reason why it, this uh, topic should matter all of us, because in, there's are so many af as aspects where we are concerned with this uh, topic of offshore companies and tax havens, because they this is a completely a parallel uh, world. It's a secret offshore world, and we should, I think, shed some light into this uh, world. And um, Michael Hudson, on the issue of Ponzi schemes in the United States. Yes. Uh, we haven't reported on those yet, but we do have, uh, you know, the thing you have to remember is anytime there's a major fraud case, uh, Madoff, any of those kind of cases, there will be an offshore element. When the money, it, when the money is, is so large, when the schemes are so big, you need offshore to help, help cover your tracks and help, help hide the loot. And we do have—we don't have Madoff-level Ponzi schemers. There's, you know, he's, his, his Ponzi scheme was the biggest of all time. But we do have, have fraudsters based in America uh, who have been doing business with this, with this uh, law firm, and we, we will be reporting them down the road. Mm -hmm. um, I've been looking at David Sirota's article. He had— uh, uh, tweeted, email shows Clinton State Department pushing Panama Pact and warnings it would help the rich hide money. Um, the, the Panama FDA pushed for by Obama and Clinton watchdog groups said effectively barred the United States from cracking down on questionable activities instead of requiring concessions of the Panamanian government on banking rules and regulations, combating tax haven abuse in Panama could violate the agreement. Should the U.S. embark on such an endeavor, it could be exposed to fines from international authorities. Right. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, you know, the United States has taken a role, and it has, seems in many ways to be working at cross purposes. The U.S. Justice Department has gone after Swiss banks in a big way, gotten huge settlements with some of the biggest banks and even some of the smaller Swiss banks, and put pressure. But uh, there, there are many other examples of the United States uh, either either having policies which which encourage uh, money being moved around secrecy, secretly. Or uh, where uh, we're turning a blind eye, you know, the, there are states like Delaware and Nevada where there's just as much secrecy, just as much privacy. If you want to get a, a company, if you want to have a shell company and, and not you not have your name publicly attached to it, you can do that. Um, if we haven't lost him yet, uh, Frederick Obermeyer in Munich, uh, new headline in The Wall Street Journal, India launches probe after Panama Papers reports. The Indian finance minister said New Delhi will set up a multi-agency panel to examine each of the people named in the report. How prominent is India in this wave of um, uh, documents? Um, India turns up in the context of dozens of very, very interesting cases, for example, where our colleague Rita Sarin specialized on. Um, what she found that was amazing, it was uh, 
tracks leading to prominent um, politicians. But I don't want to tell too much because I don't know and haven't followed her uh, reporting that closely that I would know which she, she already had reported and which not. So I'm sorry for that. Well, finally, Michael Hudson, what does this mean for international collaborative journalism? I mean, how many journalists, how many newspapers worked on these documents that have been revealed over the last year? Yeah, well, the New York Times said they didn't even know that this was being worked on. An uh, interesting public editor wrote a piece, like, why aren't they doing more on this? Why aren't they featuring this? Well, they weren't included in this. Um, and they said they're looking into it now. Right. More, more than 100 news organizations from more than 70 countries have worked on this. For how long? For uh, most of them, for, for, for more than a year. Um, you know, we start. You know, we've been doing these collaborative projects for for a long time. Uh, we were talking in terms of dozens of people involved in, in earlier projects. Now, this this current project, more than 370 journalists around the world. Uh, and, and as I said, it's all about people realizing that that you, could, you you the more you give, the more you share with your with your your fellow journalists, with your colleagues, the more you're going to get back in the end. And that you don't have to you know this sort of cutthroat competition that that. It often characterizes a journalism uh, that doesn't have to be the way forward. And uh, any indications on who, whether there are multiple sources here, Frederick Obermeyer? Is it just one? And the story behind getting the do actual physically getting these documents, these files? Uh, I would rather not comment on that because we want to protect our source. So I hope you understand that we will not. <laughs> uh, that I cannot answer this question into, de into detail. OK, we'll leave it there. But, of course, continue to cover these stories as they roll in. Frederick Obermeyer speaking to us from Munich, Germany. His newspaper, um, uh, he's an investigative reporter um, uh, in with Germany's leading um, newspaper, the Munich-based uh, Süddeutsche Zeitung, uh, co-author of Panama Papers, A Story of a Worldwide Revelation, just released today in Germany. And thanks so much to Michael Hudson, uh, the senior editor at International Consortium of Investigative journalists, or ICIJ, which published the Panama Papers. And we'll link to uh, everything we see as it unfolds and as it comes out at democracynow.org. We'll be back in a minute.